honest, yeah, by far, I would say. I mean, if that's, if, if the goal was just, if your motivation was purely financial, then, um, you know, financially speaking, yeah. I mean, the, the most successful people in the industry are, you know, the top songwriters and producers, the Max Martins, the Dr. Luke's, the Rick Rubens, the Timberlands. There's very little that any artist in the world could do that would compete with, with that. Unless you're like U2 or something. Massive. Or you own a publishing company. Or you own yeah, a publishing company. Exactly. Oh, sorry. No, it's fine. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. They don't have any soy milk. Is this, the, oh, dude, is this from that machine? Which machine? The one at catering. Yeah. Coffee, milk, uh, cream, and sugar. Oh, it's all mixed together? Yeah. Okay, because, yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is it that easy for you to write pop music like that or number one hits? Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's, it's easy to write a number one. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, if it was super easy, then, you know, I would just snap my fingers and, and do it all the time. Um, I think, <clears throat> I think it's, I think it's easier to, um, you know, it's easier to write, uh, or it's easy for me, I guess, to write songs that I know are going to do well, you know, but the types of big hits that I've had um, are, you know, more specific. They're not just like, you know, uh, whatever dance hits that, you know, all these artists put out all the time, you know. I don't do, I don't do so much that type of music. So, um, you know, I try to write the kind of songs that if they do become number ones, the kind, I try to write the kind of songs that last a long time. The kind of songs that you're going to hear 10 years from now. Instead, evergreens. Yeah, evergreens. Instead of just up and down, which is what most hits are, I, I try to... It's a little bit more than like three hours worth of work. Yeah, it's a little bit more than three hours. Try like, yeah, exactly. For, for mo most of the hits, I mean, the number ones that I've had have literally songs where I, I worked for weeks on them to get, to get it just right, you know, so... I wish I was as talented or lucky as the guys who can just, you know, turn on a keyboard and then spend one day on a song and then it just automatically goes to number one. I know those guys, but that's not me. So how did you guys meet as a band? Oh, <sighs> coffee shop. Yeah. Um, we met on a... Drew, our original drummer, Jerry, was in Los Angeles. I met Jared in Col when he was like 15. I mean, Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs is really, three of us came from Colorado Springs originally. That's where the band started, so to speak. We, we met and had several meetings at like really bad coffee shops and breakfast places and discussed music and played songs for each other and, you know, start had a couple jam sessions where we just kind of played over some of the songs and then decided we need to move to Los Angeles. So, because kind of the idea is, you know, if you can make it in LA or New York, then you can, you can really make it anywhere. So, um, when we moved there, about four months after we moved there, Drew came to visit Los Angeles. I, I was, I was crashing Jared's couch, and then I, one thing led to another, and just sort of ended up never leaving. Yeah, he accidentally, he kind of accidentally ended up in the band, <coughs> so to speak, just because it had only, we'd only existed for a. a like four or five months by the time he joined and we thought about having a fifth member. We only had four members at the time and we kind of knew that we were going to have to have a fifth member for the kind of music we were doing. We had a lot of, a lot of instrumentation and everything. And, um, no, I actually, I was, I, I was a pretty good, pretty good musician back then. Right? Yeah. I was, when I was 19, I, some, I don't know what's happened since then, but I used to impress. Yeah. So it worked out. And then Eddie came along right right after that. We got rid of our original drummer and auditioned and then he joined. Um, so because we're just talking about audition, you yourself took part in um, I think an MTV like a casting show. Mm -hmm. But uh, I read online it, it didn't really work out that well for you that you like <clears throat> tried to move away from it again. Yeah, you know what's funny actually, my career started and I forgot to say this last night to Pink. Cause she'd freak out. Cause she, oh yeah, she, yeah. Remember, Cause she was. Yeah, she my was. my career started in a weird way because of Pink. Um, Pink was a all right. So I entered a uh, singer songwriter competition, 
in Nashville and I won the local thing and then I ended up in New York City on MTV. And it was sort of like an MTV precursor to American Idol. Yeah. Type thing. Yeah, it was it was there were three judges and except the difference was we were doing original material. So you had to write it. Or at least I thought you had to write it because I showed up with a song that I'd written. And um I think maybe I was the only person that actually wrote a song, actually now that I think of it. But anyway, I showed up with a guitar and I did my thing and the and the judges, the main judge was Pink, Brian McKnight. And then a, a f- relatively famous producer, and um, so when the voting came, I mean, Pink was like gave me the highest score, and you know, and she had just come out with "There You Go," her first single. There you go, talking about it, ba ba ba, you know that one. And um, a music I was doing was more acoustic, kind of jammy, whatever music. And um, yeah, she was super cool. That was a long. That was like literally she had been out maybe six months. That happens a long time ago. But we did the show with her last night, 25,000 people. I mean, the last time I actually was with her was that event 10 years ago, and she was probably worth 250 tickets, and now she's 25,000 people. You know, I mean, Pink is, but we were just talking about her a minute ago. She's probably the most impressive artist, pop artist, you know, of all those pop singers and songwriters, you know, the dancers and all that stuff. Um, Pink, hands down, I think is the, the most talented. I mean, she's taken it far. She's probably the biggest pop artist in the world. That people don't really talk about that, but think she's worth, you know, more tickets than Madonna or Britney or, you know, Rihanna or any of them. So I think it's what she's done is impressive. That's true. Um, do you guys in the big- <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bring me some of that good Austrian coffee bean. I and mean, it's a shame because we do have good coffee. We have really good coffee. I know. Austrians, you guys make damn good coffee, but this is not. That's yeah. coming out of like an American. I, I wanted to say, but you guys should be used to that. Yeah, right. <laughs> America. No, ours is even better than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's just, yeah. a, just yeah. a bad cup. I don't know who, who made it, but it's a bad cup. Uh-huh. So when you guys started out, you were assigned to Columbia, but it turned out wasn't the best teamwork in the end. What happened there? It's a really good question. Um, it, it's funny, they, they kind of, I don't want to say the writing was on the wall, but we started, they started firing everyone that we knew that worked for the record label. Yeah. And it was, yeah, it was, it, it, like granted it was six years ago, which was sort of the, uh, that was the big shift in the music industry as far as yeah, you know, like the record label should have drastically changed about four years prior to that, but they were kind of holding on. And so, you know, we little by little, we'd lose our product manager and then we sort of, you know, we'd lose all these other people on our project. And then we kept on, you know, we kept on calling saying, you know, why is the record getting bumped? It's supposed to come out last month. It's supposed to come out three months ago. You know, you're saying it's going to come out the end of the air and they just stopped they stopped calling back and so we just kind of and then uh we found out that they just pretty much cleared house and they fired everybody they fired everybody like they fired the president <laughs> they fired all of the a and r's um so they, they dropped us they dropped us uh jonas brothers and katie perry on the same day Oh my God, so, I just regret that now. Well, no, but the, 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 the funniest thing about it is, is no one was around to know any better. And actually, a couple weeks later, we got a call from some junior A&R at Columbia saying, you know, I, you guys, I heard you guys on the internet. And maybe, uh, maybe we could set up, like, you know, a showcase or something. <laughs> like, no, no, we, we did 18 of those. And you guys paid for us to make a record and <laughs> yeah they spent like half a million dollars on this i think roughly. yeah at least i'd say half a million dollars and then stop us. <clears throat> so, so thank you yeah people just we put our music up on myspace we didn't have a record deal and our, our thanks to drew yeah thanks to drew put us on myspace and then our um our, our MySpace page became, we became the, the number one artist in the world um, unsigned, unsigned without a record deal. Because they have these, 
these three charts on MySpace for years, unsigned, uh, in, independent, independent, and major. And we were on the unsigned, and <clears throat> um, pretty much any of the artists that ended up at, at the top of the unsigned chart ended up with record deals. Right before us was Colby Calais, before her was, was My Chemical Romance, and then it was us, and then like... A slew, a slew of artists that you will never hear yeah, about. Yeah, a lot of artists will never hear about, but there's a handful that, that had success after MySpace, and we happen to be one of them. So. so yeah, people just, you know, that's what's cool about the internet. If you put something up and it's good, if it's good enough, people talk about it, and then it spreads, and then it, you know, it's very... It was organic in a very <clears throat> inorganic in way. Yeah, it was, it, it was all, the whole thing though, I think at the end of the day, the whole thing was a really, it was a really important lesson for us to learn early on because we were just, the, the whole way that we'd, we'd sort of grown up and gone about pursuing music career was very, you know, it was very, it was very typical when you're, when you're young, you're in a band and you're out playing pretty much you're, you're just talking about getting your record deal. And that's all, that's all really anybody cares. We're going to get signed, 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 signed. You hear that word a million times and tell all your friends and coworkers, you know, we're about to get signed. And to that, you know, like in your mind, you're like, if we have good songs and we're signed, we're, you know, we've made it. And yeah. be, like getting signed and getting signed and getting dropped and realize, realizing that there's no, you you can be signed all day long, but if you if you aren't like working and hustling your ass off then it doesn't you don't even have a shot. Yeah. That was a really cool thing to it was a hard thing to learn, but it was a really cool thing to learn when we were young. And yeah. you know, we didn't we didn't <laughs> try and slug it out for eighteen years and then get signed and then get really lazy and then realize that, that doesn't mean anything. We we sort of you know, we like we got signed and dropped fast enough that we still had enough fire to be proactive about getting stuff done. Honestly, we actually don't work a lot with him. I don't know why people do that. <laughs> yeah, I got we've, we've done one song with him. Yeah. Um, which... Apologize, and that was, that was four <laughs> years ago, three years ago. I don't think I've ever been in the studio with him. Yeah, um, Some of these, most of these guys have never met Timbaland in our band. No, uh, that's not true. Yeah, move on. Everybody's, everybody's, uh, everyone's met him. That's right. But, yeah, him. he's, uh, you know, he, he's kind of. I mean, he's he's really as a producer, he hasn't really shaped anything, any any of our sound or anything. But uh, as I mean, just as a guy, as a guy, he he was definitely the the first one to jump up and say, "Listen, I really." You know, I really like your record. I, I think they're crazy for dropping you. I want to put it out the way it is. Yeah, he was really and, cool. He just lets us do what we want to do. I mean, we're signed to his label. After, yeah, and after after being dropped and all of all of the bullshit that we had to deal with, it was, you know, we 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 didn't want to have anything to do with major labels. But we signed, we re re signed, and we signed with Universal only because Tim Blood was the one making the offer. Yeah. And we thought, okay, here's here's this artist that we really we, we respect a lot, and yeah. you know he's always sort of gone against the grain. He hasn't necessarily been doing exactly what everybody else is doing or what he's told. And somehow somebody gave him signing power at a record label. That's who we want to go with. Yeah, yeah, we probably wouldn't have signed a record deal anywhere else. I mean, I I know I wouldn't have. I didn't want any other record deals. I was done. That was my third record deal. Columbia Records was. You know, you know. Technically, I've been on four labels now. You know, Atlantic, Columbia, Capital, and now Universal. So, to me, that was. <clears throat> I didn't want to do any other record deals, but Timberland at the time was also the biggest thing in the world when we signed with him. It was like Justin Timberlake and Nelly Furtado and Timberland, you know, his own album, and so it was a good time to do that, and uh, I think it worked, but. Fortunately, he, Timberland does his, what he does, and then we do what we do, two separate things. Every now and again, we'll do like one song together, um, you know, like a remix or something like that. But um, other than that, I mean, you know, like 
he didn't have anything to do with secrets or all the right moves or any of that stuff. What's actually the role of a producer? What, what, what does he do? A producer is responsible for the final product of whatever that song is or that album. So if... Like the overall outcome. Yeah, the overall outcome. Basically all the parts, you know, of a song, you know, the vocal, the, the instrumental, the music, the mixing, um, the producer essentially oversees it from the beginning to the end to make sure that that song is the best version it could be, period. If that means he's, he plays the instrument sometimes, sometimes he, you know, he edits it, he takes all the parts together in a big thing and makes sense out of it in sequence. Um, and sometimes he just listens and just has yeah. comments and that's essentially what the producer Pulls out a chorus or, yeah. you know, changes a key, mm -hmm. changes a, you know, <laughs> it's basically just, it's, it's the extra set of ears that you're sort of forced to listen to. Yeah. It's like it's really it's such a weird it's such a weird thing it like mu the music music today is such a frustrating thing just because what makes it on the charts versus what made it on the charts 20 years ago is such a different like it's whereas 20 years ago you'd have Celine Dion and I don't know maybe Nirvana like you'd have this very wide like very wide array of things that would sort of that would make it on the charts and you have you know you like now you could have Gloria you could have, you could have Soundgarden and Soundgarden Soundgarden and Celine Dion Gloria Estefan Miami Sound Machine and Run DMC all on the same radio station that doesn't happen anymore yeah. it's just like pop it's you know, straight it's gotta be straight, straight up the middle of the dumbest <laughs> I think that um, charts, I, I would be lying if I didn't say they were, weren't important because they are important. Um, they're not important. Uh, I don't know that they, they don't necessarily define, you know, how good your music is. Because if it was about how good, then, you know, every time radio had put out a song, it would go number one. But their stuff isn't on the radio, you know. Right. Um, and so, the, but the thing with charts is that it's very simple. Um, if you're not on the charts, you're going to get dropped. Your record label will drop you. It's that simple. Unless you are just somehow selling loads of albums without registering on a chart, which is impossible. So bottom line is... And it the doesn't even necessarily happen anymore. No, a chart. The yeah, it's, yeah, the charts, the charts essentially, you know, it sounds terrible, but they, for an artist, you know, for an artist, you know, for some artists, whether it's Black Eyed Peas or Lady Gaga, they're very important because they want to have a number every song go number one. You know what I mean? Um, and for a band, it's very difficult right now for because you know us being in a band, it's a difficult time for, to be a band because everything is so pop and dance that if you actually play real instruments on the radio, it's almost weird because there's very little real instrumentation. Um, so we feel that we're lucky. We're very lucky in that respect because we're one of the few bands that actually has big hits. And, you know, but our, our album is also very um, different. You know, it's not just a bunch of pop songs. We have a lot of interesting stuff on it. So, yeah, I think charts are important. Um, we try not to obsess over them, but I always, every country I'm in, I ask, you know, where are we? How are we doing? Because, what else is going on? Because you want to know, you want to know, uh, what can we do to make things? Because we know that the music we're doing is, is good. And with it, I mean, it's, it's different. It's, you know, it's music for, I think, people that love music. So if we're not doing well on the charts, then I want to know as a band, what can we do? Do we need to make some TV appearances? Do we need to do the show? You know, certain things to help people know that our album is out because people are so distracted. You know, you just have to let... Sometimes it's as simple as people. You have to, they hear a song on the radio and you have to connect 
the band to the song. Like that's, you know, All the Right Moves is One Republic, is Apologize, is Stop and Stare. And you have to make these connections for people to be like, oh, wait a minute, I actually like this band. I think I'm gonna buy the album. So charts are important for that, for that reason. I think you can arrange it to some degree. I you think can, I mean, you can manipulate it. You could take a, a few people can. Like if you're yeah. ahead of a uh, head of a label, you can arrange it. You can beat you can beat people over the head with the you know. It was with, easier. With something until it was easier in the '90s because you yeah. could pay. I, I mean, I'm not going to name the people, but I know record labels. I know I could name two artists right now that were huge that were um, the first. All of their hits were paid for. Record labels literally paid the radio stations to play the songs. Then that's been going on for years and years and years, but they don't do that anymore. That stopped. It's it's so illegal now that you can't you can't get away with it. But a lot of artists' careers were made because record labels paid for songs. Um, and it's kind of a fact that if you play a song enough on the radio, people will buy it. It's just like anything. You show it a song, as far as record labels are concerned, a song is a commercial. It's a commercial for the album. So if you're selling, you know, coffee and I show you a cup of coffee enough times on TV during a day, eventually you're going to buy the coffee. And that's the same thing with music and record labels. Look at it that way. But um, I think that uh, nowadays it is, it's harder, but it's music right now is all about the hit song, the single one song. It's not about the album anymore. So in essence, it is easier right now to break an artist and to create success, but it doesn't mean it's going to last. You, you can't just create Pink. You can't create Christina or, or, or create a, you know, Celine just by giving somebody one hit. Those are all people with careers. Those are careers. And so and that's, it's, that, that's becoming the harder thing. I think it's easier to get a hit right now than it has been in a long time because music is just so, you know, whatever. But, um, I don't think it's easier. I think it's way, way harder to create a career than it used to be. It used to be a lot easier to have a career. Now it's just one song, one song, one song. And every time you come, you put an album out, you better have three or four hits or people forget about you or you get dropped. So. Okay, well, last question for today. Um, reminiscing, can you remember your first live gig? Live gig? Mm. I remember in yeah. this in this band. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Actually, it was funny. The first first one you were at. The first <laughs> the first gig that I played with with them was their third gig, and yeah, it was it was at this bar. It was at this bar right around the corner from, sort of. Where, I remember that gig. Yeah, it was at this bar called called the gig actually the place is called the gig yeah and uh it's the one it, on us? yeah yeah oh, and, and since so then, so since then it's, sure. turned, it's turned into just a regular bar that actually me and my roommates hang out at all the time but uh at the time i was i was 19 and we went on stage we played maybe six or seven songs and then they wouldn't there were like there were A and R's and you know industry people and everything in the room, and I I had to go off the stage and go back into the alley because they wouldn't let me in the bar. It was too young. Because I was too young. Yeah, I remember that gig. And that was that was my first Wonder Public show. That was. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Fine. <laughs>